Are you having issues with your German short hair pointer because they will not stop biting? Well, today's the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir German Short Hair Pointer Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine needer here at FenrirCanineNeeders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the German Short Hair Pointer and then how to become a high level canine needer so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. If your German Short Hair Pointer is biting all the time, it makes it incredibly uncomfortable for you in your home because you're never going to be able to invite your friends over or if you've got kids in the home, you want to keep them away from the dog because they're biting. It's not a situation you want to find yourself in. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the CEO and founder of FenrirK9Needers.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs that won't stop biting and then how to deal with that situation. So over to you, Will. So here we are with another quick breakdown webinar of what is by far and away the most common puppy behavior problem that as a canine behaviorist myself and I know that all other canine behaviorists in the world do receive requests for help with when it comes to puppies in particular and that is puppy biting. Puppy biting is incredibly common, happens with every single puppy in the world but it doesn't stop it being incredibly frustrating and a lot of owners, especially first time owners, absolutely pull their hair out of that. So what we wanna do in this webinar is teach you, either if you're wanting to get into this as a profession, to give you the quick fire, kind of overarching concepts of being able to help your clients. And then if you're watching this as an owner and you wanna become a higher level canine owner, and canine leader for your dog, then we're gonna give you the process that I would go through as a canine behaviorist, helping my clients with these very, very, very common problem, but it doesn't stop it being frustrating and I am gonna help you get over it, I promise. Now, I know we just quickly touched on it, but I really think it's important that we start here when it comes to puppy biting, and that is being able to have patience with an owner, especially if you're coming at this from a professional standpoint of understanding that even though if you've gone through this countless times like I have, and it might seem like a very straightforward process for you and not a big deal, it doesn't stop it being an incredibly big deal to an owner, especially a first time owner. So if you're watching this from an owner's perspective, the flip side there is also true of make a, understand that from my perspective as a canine behaviorist that's gone through this process countless times with people, that I understand that even though we have a very kind of play-by-play -play structure here to help you get over this, and we know that it's extremely common, doesn't mean that it's any less difficult for you as an owner, and we're gonna help you be able to overcome that. And I hope that you can listen to that and understand first and foremost to be able to relax, breathe and understand, okay, I'm not alone here. I don't have an aggressive dog that I need to be concerned about. My dog isn't gonna grow up to be an absolute savage and I need to be worried. This is very common. This is frustrating and you're not the only one to be frustrated, but there is things that we can do with a little bit of consistency, patience and calm, consistent leadership to be able to get past this. Now, the first thing that we must do with any kind of puppy biting cases is we need to exercise our puppies more. Now, I know, especially in the world of large, powerful breeds, and this is kind of having a trickle down effect to many of the even medium and smaller breeds, that people are very overly concerned with how much exercise they give their dogs because of growing bones, growing joints. Now, I'm not a vet, I don't claim to be, and you should always listen to the advice of the vets and the professionals. But in terms of don't, what I like to say to my clients is listen to what they say, follow their professional guidelines and advice, but do not use your puppy growing as an excuse to not exercise them. Whatever is the maximum amount of exercise that you can healthfully give your puppy, give it to them. The more exercise you give them, the better. Now, I can't tell you to go against your vet's advice, but I can tell you what I do personally is that I don't really follow any guidelines at all. If I think my puppies need exercise, then I let them have exercise. I do truly believe that a puppy will slow themselves down and will stop. Now, if we've got an extreme breed, like some of them huge mastiffs, or maybe a dachshund that has been bred in such a way that there is a significant issue with their growth and joints that we have to be very careful, then that might be a different argument. But I personally believe in giving as much exercise as possible to our puppies. If they were out in the wild, 
there'd be nobody interjecting and telling them to stop playing. Obviously, those dogs that would be in the wild aren't necessarily these dogs, like I say, the Mastiffs, the Dachshunds that have these common problems. So I'm not saying to ignore your vet. I'm clearly saying that you should listen, but you should give as much exercise as you feel comfortable giving your puppy. If you do that, biting will, I promise, will be much, much less and much easier to manage and then much easier to teach them that it's not acceptable. A puppy that is bored, frustrated and has pent up energy will mouth, bite and chew everything that it can find. If you can release that energy, that will solve a huge portion of the problem. Now here at Fenrir, and if you've been watching any of our videos, you will know that we believe that the number one priority when we have a dog or helping clients with dogs is about relationship. You must become a calm, consistent leader that has a dog that will look up to you for guidance and direction. Now, as a canine behaviorist, I do also specialize in what we class as death row dogs, and they tend to be older dogs that are displaying very severe behaviors that are at the point where that dog is about to get put down and then I'll come in and put in an intervention strategy to be able to modify those behaviours and keep them from ending up in shelters or being put down. When I'm working with those adult dogs, we can go in and we can go straight into a, a full boot camp style process of being able to as quickly and as efficiently restructure that relationship. Now, when it comes to puppy biting, one of the common problems that you'll find, whether you're helping your clients, whether this is happening with you, we need to address the problem. As a good leader, we don't ignore something like biting, we address it. Doesn't mean, and I'm going to talk about the implications of how we go about addressing that later, but we don't ever ignore it. That's poor leadership. We address it and we show our dogs how we do want them to behave. Now, what people will do is that they'll listen to that, they'll skip the exercise part, they'll skip restructuring the relationship that I want to talk about now and they'll go straight to the modification plan and then they'll wonder why isn't it working as effectively and I'm utilizing this verbal correction, my dog's ignoring it. Those things are a telltale sign that that dog does not respect you as a leader and you do not have a good relationship. That relationship is broken. If you are a good leader, and we use the analogy of a mum with their puppies, if you watch a mum with a litter of puppies, the second it corrects a dog through a growl, a grumble, even just a change in body language. They can get a whole litter of puppies to stop on a dime. We should be able to do the same thing with our puppies, and that includes puppy biting. A mother dog would never allow that puppy to bite them to the point of it hurting them. They would address it quickly, efficiently, and fairly, and that puppy would listen. The reason the puppy listens is because it respects the leadership of its mother. We need to get to the same relationship with our puppies that it respects us as the leader, and we'll listen when we tell it to stop doing things, and then also we'll listen when we ask it to do it things. That is the essence of being able to have a fantastic dog. Now, when we've got young puppies that are biting, we don't like to put them through a boot camp process because it can be quite intense. Uh, there's lots of time around exercise that, that would be too much for a puppy. The drills that we do there are, are too intense for a young puppy. We, they haven't got the attention span yet. So that's where we created our perfect puppy program. What that is, is a, it's designed obviously from the day you bring your puppy home, but if you're two weeks in, you can still jump in and it, not only gives you a structure of what you should be doing at what stage of your puppy's uh, developmental program all the way through that first year, but there's also tons of information in there. There'll be a link down below, by the way, uh, of how you become a high-level canine leader, how you're able to structure that relationship with your puppy so that when we want to address biting, we can address it quickly, efficiently, with no issue whatsoever. So the biggest thing I want to give you here in this webinar, whether you're helping your clients or whether you're just trying to help yourself, is do as much exercise as you can. I promise you that'll help. Restructure the relationship. If you can do that, then what we're gonna talk about now in terms of actually addressing puppy biting will become a thousand times easier to the point like it will blow your mind. Put the effort in here, I promise. Focus on this bit. I know you want me to get on to talking about how to address biting and we're going to now, but before I move on, please heed my warning of going through this thousands of times that this bit will not be anywhere near as effective if you don't restructure and address the relationship. If you've got an older dog, three, four, five months, you can look at doing a boot camp and abbreviating it and making it applicable for your puppy. I've done it with puppies myself. If you go back to when I had my Connie Corso puppy, 
when she was four months. We put her through a, an abbreviated version of the boot camp process. It was after Christmas, routine had fallen out a little bit and we wanted to go, you know what, let's get into it. Let's do a really structured discipline and we use the boot camp to help us do that to huge levels of success. The puppy program also might be a fantastic way of being able to achieve the same results without that kind of um, the discipline of something like a boot camp. So they're down in the description box below if you need that help. But basically, it's just around the concept. Learn how to become a high-level canine leader. Learn the principles of the basics of operant conditioning about being able to reward desired behaviors and correct undesirable ones if you can do that and you can restructure that relationship this next bit that we're going to talk about now i promise will be loads easier so now we move on to correcting the behavior like i say you've done the work you've done the hard bit now this bit now becomes the easy bit if you skip that this bit is really difficult but you've not done that you've listened to me so this bit is now going to be really easy to fix puppy biting we need 100 percent of implementation and consistency of rules, boundaries, and expectations. So coming away from this video, you are gonna make a decision with you and everybody else in the household, or you're gonna be able to pass this message on to your clients that puppy biting is now from this moment 100% unacceptable and we are not going to ignore it because that's not what a good leader does we are going to address it and correct it every single time with 100 percent consistency now does that mean that the first time you do it it's going to work no it's not the case with humans it certainly isn't the case with dogs that is why consistency is so important but what you're going to do is you're going to implement this 100 percent of the times that puppy biting is displayed now like i say if you've exercised more the biting won't happen as much but either way puppies are going to bite there's no way that you can avoid it we just need to be able to address it address it and teach them what they should do instead so we go in with a correction the second your puppy bites you you are going to go from fun, happy, playing, lovely, whatever it is that you were down on the floor where you're with them that they could actually bite you or nip you. We're going to go from that fun, loving, caring person that you want to be with your dog. And we're going to instantly go chest up, shoulders back, leadership, body language. And we're going to very quickly, with impeccable timing, every single time, we're going to go in with a very stern verbal correction. I personally like to use an at-at. Ah, ah, so bite goes on, so hey, who's a good boy, who's a good boy, and the puppy goes to bite, and I go for a who's a good boy to ah! That switch happens instantly. You go from fun loving Will to leader Will, pack it in, stop doing what you're doing right now. And we're gonna be able to, and the more, and this is why it's so important that you put the effort into that leadership. If you have that relationship and your dog sees you as a leader, you making that change, will be more than enough and that will make them go whoa, whoa whoa i'm sorry i'm sorry there's a little bit of fear there but that's good it's healthy the same way that that should be the case with your children that if it came to a point of your child running out into the road and you can't physically grab them and stop them you better hope that your child will listen to that stop now because they have that respect for your authority and leadership to stop them running out into a road and getting run over. We need that same kind of respect and authority with our puppies. We can be fun, loving, amazing, cuddly, cute. I want you to have that relationship, but you can't have that if you don't have the leadership relationship as well. So we're gonna go in with a correction that will be more than enough to get them to stop. We're gonna remove ourselves from the situation doesn't mean that we have to get up and go away, but if we're down on the floor and playing, and then we've come up with a vocal inflection with the verbal correction, that has removed ourselves from whatever the fun thing that we were doing with them was. So we've gone in with that verbal correction. We then redirect them to the desired behavior. And here you have a few options. You could put them into a sit and stay, and you can show them that no, if you want to be able to play with me, you need to sit and wait and be quiet. Or what we like to do with biting, especially with puppies, because they are mouthing and they're teething. Yes, it's frustrating for them. Yes, they want to ease their gums. It is easy to, oh, bless him, he's just teething, I'll let him off. But that isn't acceptable. That's not what good leaders do. Instead, we're going to tell them, no, you don't bite people. You don't nip people. Even if you're just doing it because your teeth are hurting, that isn't acceptable. However, what is acceptable is you can do it on this thing that I've bought you, this bone, this rope, this toy, this chew. So we're going to keep them around. Biting goes on. 
We have verbal correction, chest up, vocal inflection. We go to leader very quickly, make the dog understand very clearly. We then redirect them to the desired behavior, which can be utilizing some obedience work, but it can most commonly be biting, redirect them to a appropriate chew toy. And when they're chewing on that appropriate chew toy, we then reinforce, good boy, yes. And we do that over and over and over again with 100% consistently. You will very quickly get to a point where you have a puppy that doesn't chew or bite problem solved. What I also want you to do very quickly on top of that is to be able to find times where your dog is chewing, or your puppy is chewing appropriate things and is biting and nipping the appropriate things in, to in terms of their toys and chews. Then we're going to reinforce and praise that as well. So we're not going to ignore those times. We're going to let them know, yes, thank you. This is what I want you to be doing. Good boy. Good girl. Yes. Then if they bite you or something that they shouldn't be biting, verbal correction, redirect to what we do want you to do reinforce that behavior instead undesirable behavior gets corrected with 100 percent efficiency and consistency Desi undesirable behavior comes down redirect to the desirable behavior and going out our way to reinforce when they're doing it anyway that desirable behavior comes up over time we get this and you'll have that perfect puppy that you've always wanted so i hope that helps go away implement it and i promise you you'll have a lot of success there you go guys, some really useful information, some tips and tricks that you're going to be able to put into practice with your German Shirt Hair Pointer to stop them from biting. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week, so I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir German Short Hair Pointer Show.